It's Christmas Eve and all the little dogs are partaking in the holiday festivities, hanging their favorite ornaments. Christmas games. Go get them. Opening that one gift. And of course, the Christmas Eve meal. And as they get tucked in at night, they wish and wish on a star so bright for Santa to come with lots of gifts and treats. But they not need to worry as they were good pups and even better all week. But one pup does not care for Santa or what he will bring. She wants what she wants now because she is a queen. The pug ripped open gifts. She ate all the pie. She even ate the cookies and said, to hell to that fat guy. And you know who shows up if there's no cookies, no milk, and one naughty little pug who screams like an elf. That's right, frightening Krampus who scoops children up. But this year she's not here just for this small pup. No, no, someone has been even more naughty than that. And her name's Virgie Tovar and she's been a fat brat. Hello and welcome to the channel. I've got my little naughty pug in the sack, but someone's been way more naughty than you little pug. Someone's been spreading the notion that being fat is beautiful and her name is Virgie Tovar. Hi, I'm award-winning fat activist and professional feminist killjoy Virgie Tovar. And she has an accomplice, Ulta. Beauty. Recently, Ulta Beauty, a very popular store in America where you can find the top beauty brands. Many top YouTubers and celebrities have had their palettes or makeup brands stocked on the shelves for America to see. Ulta is a bright store with a multitude of different beauty brands where the possibilities are beautiful. Well, that's not the only thing they are calling beautiful. Now they are saying obesity is beautiful too. And even had Virgie Tovar, the woman who was upset that someone asked for a smaller slice of cake and called them fat phobic. Author of the You Have the Right to Remain Fat was featured on Ulta Beauty's one and only YouTube channel in a video titled The Beauty of Fatness. Okay, yes. well, hi friends. Welcome to the Beauty of an Ulta Beauty podcast where we talk with and learn from pioneers that are helping us redefine what beauty is and where beauty lives. And I'm going to break down the whole thing, everything, so you don't have to sit through this dumpster fire of a 30 minute video where the host David Lopez doesn't question, challenge, Virgie at all. He just preaches acceptance, love, and Love. I want to let everyone know that this is a safe zone. It is a judgment-free zone. And constantly snaps his fingers at everything Virgie says. Right. No, right? Like, Tea. I mean, it's like, it's so mm, right. complicated. Mm. Yeah. You just, you took us all to church. But first they have to take off their shoes. Shoes off? Do you want to take your shoes off? Right? I'm down. Okay, Let's I'm take ready. Her shoes. <laughs> My shoes are off. She is Virgie Toe. Var. I would completely expect her to kick off her shoes in an interview and let her toes breathe. So David, the host, starts the interview off by referring to her book where straight off the bat, Virgie starts talking about when she was a younger fat little girl, a young fat, if you will. And she would just jiggle around in her room alone and how she felt so free. I would spread out my arms and legs as far as I could and I would Jiggle. And he asked, how did you come up with this mind-blowing first statement in your amazing book to reel in the reader? And she says, when I was a child, I was young, innocent. I loved my body. But then fat phobia and bigotry tainted the mind of my child brain and taught me that obesity wasn't okay. And like for me, fat phobia, which is a form of bigotry against higher weight people, is what took me out of my body, you know? And I feel like once I learned fat phobia, I had a sense of this is my body and this is me. We then get an explanation, a little lesson, on the difference between fat phobia and fat activism. Yeah, so I mean, fat phobia is a form of bigotry. We've been taught that our attitudes towards higher weight people are rightfully negative because of health reasons. Mm, right. Yeah because it's unhealthy to be obese. Unhealthy is usually looked at as a negative thing. Nobody wants to be unhealthy. I love how the host is like, yes, totally. Keep in mind, she's not talking about bullying. I know you humans don't like bullying and I personally love scooping up the little fat kids, 
more meat for me. But she's talking about just looking at obesity as a negative thing because of this whole health thing people keep talking about. That our notion of health is deeply flawed, problematic, and kind of living in the 1800s. Like we look at smoking as what? Yes, negative. We look at self-harm as what? Yes, negative. Drugs, yes, you got it right, negative. Anorexia. You got it again. Also looked at as negative. But if we look at obesity, which is hurting yourself through food, as a negative thing, we are fat phobic. We are the issue. So she also likes to bring up that obesity and all of these scientific studies and, you know, all the tools used to dictate whether someone is obese or not is just outdated. And since she's talking about things being outdated, what do you think the first thing she's going to bring up next? That's right, you guys are so smart. The BMI. The BMI was invented in the 1800s, okay? Um, um, get your get your finger out of here. Don't do this. Like what she's saying is some so chic, something so groundbreaking educational that you're speechless and can't uh, 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 get words out of your mouth. And all you can do is just point at the camera. Virgie, come here, listen here, darling. I know you're watching. Obesity and its health risk will never be outdated. This isn't fashion. Obesity isn't clothing. It will always be unhealthy, no matter if the most racist white person said it in the 1800s or- By European men. By, or an extremely white male doctor said it in 2022. You're on the path of a lot of health risks. Want more cake? I'm sure you do. Next, Miss Tovar brings up how fat phobia is a form of discrimination that is on the same level of being black, gay, and of course, disabled. In fact, fat phobia is an actual legitimate form of discrimination. It aligns with other types of discrimination like around race or gender or, or you know, or any number of marginalized identities. And you know how much I love absolutely get giddy with excitement when these women put being fat on the same level of being discriminated against like people of color or people who are gay or and of course people who are disabled who didn't want to be disabled or they were born that way or got into some type of freak accident that made them disabled love that and many people were very upset if you look at the comment section that she put it on the same level as disabled people and thank goodness many people black people were very upset in the comment section that she said that it was the same as being discriminated as a black person. Thank you so much, Virgie Tovar. I'm sure in the 1900s where Negroes and Mexicans were on the same level of dogs, not being able to enter into a restaurant, grocery store, and pools as well, they also had a sign saying, sorry, fat white women, you can't come in. Yeah. Definitely had that. Right. Right. And so fat phobia manifests in a lot of different ways, like everything from a wage gap, like plus size women make $9,000 to $19,000 less per year than straight size women. You know what? I'm not even going to look it up. I just want to think about it logically. One, I don't think that's true, which I will say with no proof because she provided zero proof. It was all just from her head. And let's just say, you know what? Let's say they do. Did you ever think because some obese people might be doing less than other people? Maybe their work ethic isn't up to par to other people. Stop talking! Let's just say that in, at an office, 600 pound Sally has a hard time getting up, getting to the printer, moving. She's always complaining about how her body hurts because you know if you're 600 pounds, crack! <laughs> you're gonna be hurting. And she's just always complaining. It just feels like there's just a big cloud over her, not the most positive. She might not talk all the time and be disruptive, but she just is there. And then we have skinny Sadie. She's leaping from the computer, parkouring to get the facts, getting those reports to the boss in an efficient and quick amount of time. She's not sluggish. She's not complaining about her body always hurting. She's getting more done throughout the day. And the boss or whoever gives the promotion sees that and skinny Sadie gets a raise. While 600 pound Sally broke a freaking chair. Maybe they are not as efficient in their job. And so the numbers are showing that they are making less because they are not getting promotions, doing as much things or getting as many tasks done or asked to get tasks done as the smaller people are doing. I'm sorry, the street size women. Did you only look at the numbers and stop it right there and then complain about it? Or did you think about it as a whole? No! Fuck! But I forgot, in their world, they think morbidly obese people can do the same thing as a not morbidly obese person. So as she goes off on all the unfair injustice toward fat people, mostly obese women, and the host literally just sits there, nodding his head 
hard as she expresses that statistically fat people are less appealing to date. Because we all know like how higher weight people are considered less appealing partners less appealing dates. I cannot comprehend how we can just sit there and be like, yes, queen, and be in complete agreement and acceptance that people can't have a preference. Especially because Virgie Tovar doesn't even date fat men herself. Virgie Tovar's boyfriend is a pretty aesthetically pleasing and attractive, actually, I think he's white and well-groomed. It's like an ongoing trend that I see this fat activist don't date other fat people. At least that I've seen that if they date a man, He's not fat. And not only do they praise the fat woman that gets the conventionally attractive white man, which I find very, very interesting that they do because that means that they're putting someone that has a very lean body, a slimmer body on a higher pedestal. Interesting. Fat activism is sort of the response to fat phobia. It's essentially kind of an intersectional um, politic that looks at fat phobia and says, this is wrong. There's nothing wrong with being fat. This is totally a natural part of body diversity. Diversity meaning variety and body diversity means a wide range of bodies. So she's saying the everlasting phrase that they always say, all bodies are different. We know that Virgie, but that doesn't mean that some bodies are naturally fat, that makes no sense. They eat too much. Our current cultural attitude is that the, the solution to fat phobia is for fat people to become thin people. <laughs> And we were never, th I'm not a thin person. There's not a secretly a thin person inside of me. Well, yeah, you haven't given her a chance to break free. You're suffocating her with all the donuts you eat that are almost as big as your head. Try and force and bully every fat person to become a thin person. And fat activism says, no, you do not blame the individual who's experiencing discrimination for the discrimination. You end the discrimination. Now this, this is where we can agree about 50%, which is still enough but that's fine. I agree that walking up to someone who is fat in public or, you know, it's 2022, social media is a thing. I don't agree with someone going onto some fat person's page or anyone's page on TikTok and saying, you miss piggy looking lump, lose weight. I find that rude. And you will definitely end up in Krampus's bag whether you're a child or not. But the issue I have is that people like Virgie think that the situation I just gave you is on the same level as someone talking about obesity being unhealthy or the health risks that come with it. They think a doctor saying obesity is unhealthy is bullying. To be fair, she thinks that someone saying, can I have a smaller slice of cake, I'm on a diet, I wanna lose weight, is a personal attack on her and fat liberation. A cake-related fat phobic incident, or CRFI, is that moment when it's time to eat delicious cake and it's interrupted by a moralizing impulse. Inevitably, there's always someone at the party who has to declare publicly that their slice is too large. I'm also obsessed with her answer to the question of the host when he asks, what's your definition of health? Really, what is your definition of health? Hmm, yeah, that's really complicated. Hmm, why? Why is it complicated? Because you're not healthy? Because you're constantly fighting against basic scientific facts with your feelings? It's only complicated because you make it that way, baby. And I want to start by saying that, you know, no one has to be healthy. Just answer the question, Virgie. It's not that hard or complicated. What is your definition of healthy? Look at the disabled community, mm. right? Why are you bringing up disabled people now? We just want a general, even, even a vague, explanation of what your definition of healthy is. And I, I, I want to bring in like, um, actually like a friend who's who's a PhD in nutrition. And no, 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 no. I, I want an actual explanation of what you, right there, Tovar, Miss Tovar thinks of what healthy is. Not your friend, that's a nutritionist. And she was like, if science isn't serving humanitarian ends, then what is the point that we're doing? <laughs> like, what's the point of it? Point to it? What about? The research that Virgie has posted in the past that fits what she stands for. Those are fine because this group loves to post tiny, minuscule studies that say fat people have less chance of dying because they have so much fat and they're squishy and their tummies are cute. Jiggle on, ladies. By the way, still didn't get that explanation of what healthy is. She just went on this huge rant of just fluff to 
confuse us? Including 70-ish percent of the US population, then it's not working. It's not working. Just because you clap and he repeats what you say doesn't make this any more true and any less cringe. It's not working. It actually makes it more cringe that you thought that that was some type of gotcha moment. And the host is not helping. He's just feeding a woman that clearly does not need to be fed. You just, you took us all to church. <laughs> um, I'm shook. I'm gooped, I'm gagged in every sense of the word. Next, the host wants to play a little game. I wanna play a little game with yes. you. So with this game, you pick a card, any card, and you read it, and there's usually a question on the card. So Virgie's question was, what's one thing that bothers you the most about the world today? And Virgie's like, oh God, there are just so many things that Piss me off. I mean, there's so many things. But I guess I'll choose one. Injustice, right? Mm. But here's the thing about injustice, okay? It not only is anti-humanitarian, but it's anti-scientific. Wait, but I thought you said science is outdated in a way. And if it doesn't fit 60-ish percent of the population, we should just boot it. But now you're using it as a example? So she does say something that I also agree with for the second time, we've had two today, that she is thankful for social media camera phones to show that fat people aren't just the herald of the group or the insert any fat character here where their personality is that they eat and they sit on the couch. You know, up until recently, up until we had cameras on our phones, it was fat phobes who were creating images of all fat people. So they were consistently undignified, consistently unidimensional, like, you know, um, dehumanizing. And I agree, if I was fat, I would be so tired of seeing every character walk around with a trombone, sitting on the couch and eating, even though y'all say eating whatever you want and, and these uh, what I eat in a day as fat videos where you guys are just binging on food is liberating and you also got upset that somebody wanted a smaller slice of cake. All could be something that we could input into a cartoon and would be very comical. And you would think that it was just the writers being dramatic, but in reality, it's real because you made it real, Virgie. So then, at the end, they break out this box that Virgie brought as a gift for the host. It's Christmas, you guys, because he likes to keep special things from his guests on his shelf to display for whoever wants to look at it. Let's see what's <laughs> let's see what's in this gorgeous, gorgeous box. And what did Virgie bring? So it is the first ever fat kini. Her first fat kini. All of us would love to have Virgie Tovar's first fat kini. Oh my God. I would love to have a piece of clothing where Virgie and her toe and her vagina rubbed all up in it. And oh my God, are yeah, you serious? Yeah, so I was like, right. Fake. Fake as hell. You know damn well you don't want no fat kini on your shelf. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. That is very special. I'm done with this. Join the pug. Yeah. Join the pug in the bag. You. Host for being a liar and Virgie. I don't even want to bring you back with me. I'll take care of you right here. <laughs>